If I were to ask you what kind of printer can you get for $55, the most correct answer would be none. None kind of printer should you buy for $55. Uh, $55 retail. Uh, but if you're patient uh, and you keep an eye on AliExpress, occasionally Voxel Lab will sell a used Aquila for $60 minus a $5 rebate. Now by used, they mean that there is no warranty on the printer and there may be parts that are missing or damaged, at which point you're supposed to reach out to the manufacturer and see if they are willing to replace them or not. Uh, so I took them up on the offer and we're going to see whether I got a mostly functional printer like many people have or whether they sold me a giant bag of All right, so first, uh, to comment on the packaging. This is kind of normal AliExpress packaging. Uh, it feels like it's a fairly thin cardboard box. It looks a little beat up. That's a little bit surprising since it did ship domestically, but it's no better or worse than anything else I would expect from AliExpress. Uh, when you tilt the box though, there's a lot of loose parts rattling around in there, which is not a confidence builder. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is open the box, lay out everything, and see if we can match it up to some kind of bomb or uh, parts list or something like that. Yikes. And this is definitely a printer that was partially assembled or completely assembled and then just ripped apart and thrown back in the box. There's literally nothing packaged. It is held together via wire. All right, well, that's what came in the box, uh, and it's about as bad as I would have expected it to be. Um, you know, things have been rubbing against each other during shipping, so there's, you know, scratches and stuff all over the extrusion. It, it's, in, it's in rough shape. We'll, we'll leave it at that. Even the instructions came tattered and ripped up. It's obvious that somebody uh, tried to assemble this thing and either got frustrated or something didn't work out, and they just kind of haphazardly threw it back in the box. Uh, and Voxel Lab just turned around and drop shipped it right back out. Uh, there's very little here that's properly packaged and it looks like a lot of it is, again, half set up at best. So we'll see what we can do. So the printer is assembled. It's pumped out its first Benchy. Uh, some issues that I hit during assembly, kind of an order of most severe to least. Uh, the most severe problem was that the X carriage was bent and is bent in such a way that no matter how you position the eccentric nuts, the wheels would not grip the extrusion. Uh, and I could see where that would be hugely frustrating to the previous owner. There's no, you know, there's really no solution to that besides returning the printer. Uh, I just you know, bend it back using a pair of pliers, but that should not be uh, what a, a regular user is expected to do. So that was fixed. Uh, the next most severe problem was probably the Z end stops. Both the end stop holder was broken as well as the JST connector that attaches to the end stop. Uh, I managed to kind of finagle it onto uh, the extrusion good enough for now. Uh, and then I recrimped a new connector on the end. Uh, so it works you know, good enough, uh, but I'll probably need to print something or come up with another solution for that end stop uh, in the near future. 
Uh, the third issue is that one of the bed leveling knobs was broken. This looks like a shipping problem. Uh, the bed was kind of half attached when I opened the box. Uh, the person who owned it before obviously just disassembled it kind of you know, halfway and threw it in the box. Uh, and then this knob uh, was almost definitely ripped off as part of the, the, the shipping and packaging problems. Then finally, the PSU uh, was set to 220 volts instead of 115. Uh, that's not necessarily a problem and the instructions do tell you just to check the power supply and make sure it's the right voltage for your country uh, but you know this printer shipped out of the United States so presumably the previous owner was also likely in the United States I, I doubt they would have sold it overseas into a country that had you know is 220 volt standard uh, and then shipped it back to the United States so that they could sell it used to me um, so my guess is that the, the previous owner didn't appropriately check or set the, the power supply voltage and that probably also caused them you know, issues as well. And then besides that, it's just the normal, uh, you know, tighten the bolts, tension the belts, plug in all the electronics and, uh, and let her rip. I had no issues with the electronics coming up, uh, the heaters and thermostores and everything worked out of the box. Uh, so no real problems uh, apart from those that I just mentioned. The micro SD card that came with the printer was broken, literally cracked in half. So I have no idea what, uh, what software or what sample files or anything come with the printer. Uh, I printed this first Benchy using the Ender V2 profile in Cura 5 and it came out fantastic. The layers all look great. Uh, bed adhesion was fantastic. Uh, the overhangs are great. Uh, the only problem you know, where it's not perfect is at the very top of the stack there's some under extrusion and that's just because uh, this film it kind of got hung up and bound it's, it's a loose piece of sample filament and you know not an actual spool and there's no guide here or anything like that so uh, not the printer's fault that's my fault uh, everything on this benchy looks fantastic from a, a quality perspective though uh, that profile is pretty slow it's a manufacturer profile so uh, it did take about two hours to pump out this little guy uh, but uh, we can do some tweaking there i'm sure I've had the printer for about a week now and I've run a number of prints through it. I printed the replacements for the parts that arrived broken out of the box. That's the Z in-stop holder uh, and the bed level adjustment knob. I printed a case for the Raspberry Pi that I'm using for Octoprint. Uh, I printed this tool holder uh, and a handful of random items like uh, a Benchy, which was the first thing that came out of the printer, uh, a Mandalorian trophy, a calibration cube, and a baby Samus Aran. And the printer handled all of them with flying colors. Uh, the default profile produced a great looking benchy so I pretty much stuck with it. Uh, the PLA I used most often uh, tends to be a little bit more curly and, and shrinky than most PLA so I did up the bed temp a little uh, and turned down the cooling a touch as well. Uh, but all the speeds and, and whatnot are stock from the Ender 3 V2 profile that comes default in Cura. Bed adhesion is pretty darn good. Uh, the initial benchy on the sample filament that came with the printer came out great with no adhesion assistance, no brim or anything. The first prints on this rather more curly PLA struggled a little bit. Uh, I added a brim and some glue stick uh, for the first couple of prints, but since then, every print sticks without issue. Uh, I think this surface is almost as good as my textured PEI sheet, maybe not quite at the same level, uh, but in the same ballpark. Uh, it's head and shoulders better than like the cheap stick-on sheets that a lot of cheap printers ship with. The calibration cube came out great, uh, just a couple hundredths of a millimeter off in X and Y, a little more than that in Z, but I think most of that is down to first layer tuning and, and calibration issues, not uh, stepper calibration. The initial benchy came out great, so I was expecting good things from the Mandalorian trophy, and the Aquila did not disappoint. Uh, the skull features look great, save for a little bit of under extrusion, uh, and that's, uh, that's that 1.0 multiplier. Now, I like Baby Samus because it's an easy print on a resin printer, but a real pain on FDM. Uh, there are small details and, and, and overhangs uh, and little tiny joints in Samus's knees and, and waist. It's really more of like a slicer and filament stress test. However, without a well-calibrated printer, those settings don't make a difference, and the Samus came out great. Over the course of this week, I did not have to adjust the bed level after the initial bed leveling, and I guess again when I put on the, the, the new bed adjustment knob. Uh, which was a bit of a surprise. I was expecting that just given the single Z stepper, uh, there would be at least some tweaking and, and settling of the printer, but so far it's, it's been solid. However, there are some downsides to the Aquila. First, the fans are really loud. The hot in fan is especially noisy and it doesn't turn off when the printer is not in use. Uh, so as long as your printer is plugged in and switched on, that little jet engine is running and it's noisy. 
second, the hot end thermistor was over tightened. Uh, this is pretty common. Uh, the set screw is tightened so much that it compresses or maybe even tears the little insulation around the, uh, the thermistor wires. Uh, it's just enough to kind of barely short as the print head's in, in motion. Uh, this throws the temps off, but since it's moving around so much, they kind of ping pong all around. Uh, and I imagine that it, it arrived from the factory like this. I don't think the previous owner did that. Uh, there's really no reason to get in there and, and, and play with that screw unless you're trying to fix an issue like this. But on the plus side, that uh, thermistor issue did give me the opportunity to witness the thermal runaway protection in action on this printer and I can say for certain that it is working in this specific scenario that of the hot end thermostore reporting too low of a temperature. Now there are plenty of other scenarios that thermal runaway protection is protecting against uh, so you know can't say anything about those but in this specific scenario it is active and it does work. Uh, the printer shut down and emitted a loud beep. That said Octoprint still reports bad firmware. Uh, it sounds like the Voxel Labs people need to talk to the Octoprint people to resolve any open concerns and, and it's a bit disconcerting to see the safety warning whenever you load Octoprint. Um, but the protection does seem to be active. So to summarize uh, is a used Voxel Labs Aquila worth the $55 sale price? Uh, yeah, uh, assuming you have the background and knowledge to identify and address the fairly minor issues you're likely to encounter, I don't see how you could get more printer for your dollar than, than this. Now, if you're a beginner and, and you don't have access to a knowledgeable resource to assist, avoid it like the plague. It's not for you. So is the Voxel Labs Aquila worth the $150 to $175 retail price for a beginner? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. Uh, it uses the same 4040 and 2040 construction as the more expensive printer that it clones, that being the Ender 3 V2. Uh, in both cases, you're dealing with the same single Z stepper, uh, the same physical in-stop switches, but this is at $100 savings. Now, of course, not everyone may be comfortable giving their money to a company that pretty blatantly clones another product, uh, but follow that logic to its conclusion, and, and we're all buying $800 Prus i3s, so to each their own. Now, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you liked my other videos, uh, go ahead and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.